Today we are with one of the most fascinating companies in Iceland. In fact, it is can probably define Iceland in many ways. It, we, the company is called Decode, and I have the chairman. Uh, Kauru Stefansson is my name. Right. Uh, Carlos, can you tell me, what is Decode? Decode is a, is a company that uh, is uh, mining the heritage of the Icelandic nation, trying to learn uh, more about the way in which various human traits are uh, inherited, trying to find genes with mutations that cause diseases, trying to find, find variations of genes that uh, confer positive traits like longevity. Why, uh, why Iceland? Why is, why is Iceland so unique that your company is such a unique company? It is um, uh, very special because of uh, the isolation that this country or this nation the Icelandic nation has lived in for 1,100 years. There were a, a small group of founders that came to Iceland I, in the beginning, yeah, let's say, eight, between 870 and 930, and they founded this country. I, for 1,100 years, the communication with the rest of the world was in a handful of ships in the spring and another handful in the fall. There was absolutely no new blood that was brought into the country. As a consequence of that, uh, this nation became very or, or fairly homogeneous genetically and very well defined genetically. Remember that, that genetics is the discipline that studies flow of information from one generation to the next. And when you're looking at the flow of very complex information, it is very important to have something that approximates a closed system. And the Icelandic nation probably comes as close to that as any nation with significant, let's call it, educational status. Uh, the Icelanders have been fascinated by the genealogy for uh, all these 1,100 years. And the genealogy is important when you're studying genetics because it gives you the avenue by which the information flows from one generation to the next. And where, what is this going to lead to? This is going to lead to understanding of how diseases come into being. Uh, this is particularly important when it comes to uh, the complex genetic diseases all of the common diseases in our society are complex genetic diseases. And they occur at the interface between genetics and environment. So when you discover the genetic causes of these common diseases, it is likely to give you an opportunity to modify the environment to the extent that the man who inherits the predisposition will not develop the disease. I, for example, I come from a family where atherosclerosis occurs at an early age. So I have to stay away from from, uh, you know, saturated fat. I have to exercise, but I also come from a family where the genetic joint disease is inherited at an early age. So I cannot use running as a means of exercise. So you can eventually compile a very accurate and very informative record of the genetic predispositions of individuals to the development of particular diseases, and in that way you can give them a measure of control of their life. This all starts because Iceland has been this isolated society, so the gene pool here is pretty homogeneous, and, and there is this long lineage of family trees. Everybody knows from whom they... Yeah, and, and the, question, the question comes up, why, why do we know, have all of this information <coughs> about our, our genealogy, you know? Why is it today that the afternoon newspaper has one or two pages of genealogy every day? Why is it that there's a professorship of genealogy at the University of Iceland? Why are the genealogical societies all over Iceland? And every year before Christmas, they publish books on genealogy that sell in very large numbers, and I haven't the faintest idea. I think it has to do with a mutation in a particular gene. I was going to say, it must be a gene. It must which, be a gene, which causes yes. it. Uh, so there is a gene. That, now, as you look at Iceland, you could probably tell anybody in the country whether he is your cousin or not, and if so, whether you're descended. No, not probably, absolutely, definitely. So I, can, I, can, I can print out for you and, and show you uh, a pedigree that shows my relationship with the Prime Minister of Iceland, and also uh, the relationship of my, my relationship and the Prime Minister's with one of the main opponents of our company in this country. Right, but you can also figure out, I guess, even if you didn't have that, go ahead. I, 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 can, I can actually show this so we can get yeah. it on camera if you want. But you can show me also, I mean, you can show that from the genealogical tables which exist, but could you do it by just studying the, the DNA of everyone? Uh, that is more difficult because 
it is more difficult to trace the lineage exactly through the DNA, but I can show you with fairly good certainty whether people are related or not within, let's say, two or three generations. Which Where, far, when you go farther and farther back, you can eventually be looking at pieces of DNA that are found in every single member of this nation. And it, it's interesting, because if, if you think about you know, these observations in the context of, of reincarnation, that reincarnation as a, not only as a fantasy, but as a real-life phenomenon, is occurring, really, because I'm walking around with very large stretches of DNA that are exact, identical, exact replicas of DNA of Oveyus Gallagher, which was one of the heroes that founded Iceland. And, and in that way, and because of the existence of these pieces of DNA that are part of my body that are exactly identical to his. So you, you have, have determined or can determine from your DNA that you were a descendant yes. of the founder yes. of Iceland. Yes. But I guess you could point out the, everybody else in this country who is also yes. a descendant. We can do that by looking at the uh, at, uh, haplotypes uh, that come from this founder who came to Iceland. And, and, and that brings us to one of the, one of the key concepts that we are using in our work in this company, which is the so-called founder effect. You can demonstrate by looking at, at pieces of DNA that everyone in the country who has a particular disease is a descendant of one individual. So not only do they have a mutation in the same gene, which everyone has who has the disease, there is also a very large piece of DNA flanking the gene that is identical in all of these people, showing that not only do they have this gene, with a mutation, but they got this gene with this mutation from the same founder. Wow. And that is fascinating. Of course. Are there, is there any other society or culture or nation or group in the world that you know of? Who is the second most similar? I, I, there, there, are, there, are, there are nations, there are ethnic groups that match the Icelandic when it comes to, to genetic homogeneity, there's no question about it. But I don't know of any nation which has um, the genetic homogeneity, the wealth of genealogical record, as well as uh, as excellent healthcare system as we have had. And, and when you are looking, trying to determine the genetic cause of a disease, it's extraordinarily important to uh, have accurate diagnosis. The healthcare system is terribly important there. And we have excellent healthcare system with marvelous record keeping which is also one of the key elements to being able to study the genetics of disease as well. You, you have been able to determine from this unique situation whether some people will get cancer, whether some will live long. What is no, it no, but you, can, you, can, you, can, you will be able, within, let's say, the next 10, 20, 30 years, to um, assemble enough knowledge to be able to tell people whether they are likely to become old, if they avoid the speeding truck, uh, whether they are likely to develop cancer, unless they take specific measures, that they are likely to develop you know, manic depressive disease, unless they take a specific measure. This is important to keep in mind, because the idea is not to map people's you know, genetic predisposition, simply to tell them, Jim, you're going to die from whatever within a certain number of years. The idea is to create a knowledge that you can use to protect yourself against your predisposition. If you have tendency, if you have a genetic background that would lead to lung cancer, if you smoke, you simply shouldn't smoke. If you have tendency to develop atherosclerosis, you can stay away from the environmental component of support. Health. So the idea is to empower man to you know, take care of his health, to support his health, rather than put together methods to develop a, a Orwellian gene therapy that you would use after disease has occurred. In uh, the year 3000 or even the year 2100, <coughs> where, will this, where will these studies have led, looking not 20 or 30 years from now, 100 years from now, 1,000 years, years from now? 100 years, 100 years from now, I, I think that man will have taken barring catastrophes, will have taken, you know, as much advantage of genetics as I can imagine myself. I think that the, the technology is developing so fast that within 100 years, man will have taken advantage of all we can see today in the potentials of genetics. 
One other question about Iceland, speci or Iceland specifically. Since everybody is related, or one way or another, what is that, what, how has that affected the society? Are, are, are they smarter, less smart, more beautiful, less beautiful? The, the, the size of the nation is sufficient, so I do not believe that that in and of itself has any impact. This is not an inbreeding of the sort that it is going to have either positive or negative influence, I believe, on, on uh, the health of the nation or, or the capacity. So we cannot look at Iceland and say Iceland, oh, the, Ice, the Icelanders have a certain culture or a certain uh, attitude or approach they, to life. They, they, you know, they have, there are certain subtleties. You can see that we look a little bit, we have a fairly distinct look. Right. So, and that is, can be traced to our genes, there's no question about it. But I don't think that we are sufficiently related or so much more related than other nations that you can seek more specifically uh, the explanation of, of this common attribute to our genes than we can in the Americans or the English. Or so you're not all happy or sad or you like cold weather because of the genes? Yeah. I hate the cold weather in spite of my <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I, 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 I dislike the darkness in spite of on, on my genes and in spite of the fact that I was born here and, and you know I don't fit in any other culture really well. I, I don't like this but I can, I can survive it. Well, you obviously are surviving. Your company Very is well. here. Now, just one question about your company. Where will your company be in 20 years or 50 years? Or in 20 years? years, I predict that, predict that our company is going to be principally an informatics company because we are basically studying information, flow of information. And I think that in about 20 years, our company will be focusing mostly on um, taking advantage of genetics beyond finding genes taking advantage of genetics as a tool to manage healthcare, uh, as, a, a, as a tool to, uh, you know, with capacity to tailor to specific needs of individuals, you know, recommendation as far as lifestyle, etc. will be a company that will be helping healthcare systems, making themselves more cost effective through, you know, increasing understanding of, of this, this Strings interplay between environment and, and genetics. Where will Iceland be in the year, a hundred years from now, or th uh, in the year three thousand? Where will Iceland be? Iceland will basically be, uh, and Iceland this will be a nation of, of, of uh, high tech culture. I think that the future of human habitat in Iceland is going to depend on our ability to develop high tech industries. Because uh, if we do not, we are going to lose our best people from Iceland, and it doesn't take. It doesn't take profound knowledge in genetics to understand that you only need to lose your best people of one generation to be a nation fairly diminished. Well, I look forward to coming back in the year 3000 and we will see how many of your predictions have come true. I look forward to see you in the year 3000. And maybe we will both like cold weather <laughs> yes. in the year 3000. We have changed. We are not grown older, but we have you know, grown to like cold weather. Right, exactly.